Buongiorno mondo, and welcome back to 15 with Fosca, the podcast, and to the second part of my conversation with Lucia Ducci, director of the College of the Holy Cross's Florence program. Last week, we spoke about Lucia's journey to where she is right now, and in this episode, we continue that conversation and also take a deeper dive into the inspiring story of pioneer U.S. expat in Italy, Sarah Parker Remen. This month also marks one year of Ask Fosca, and to celebrate, I'll be taking and answering your questions about anything and everything Italy on a future podcast. So submit your questions by April 30th via DM or contact me directly at askfosca.com. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Grazie mille e buon ascolto. Will you write her story? Are you thinking about yes, what, what's thinking. the next uh, step with her? Exactly. I think I would love to complete this research. Um, but as I said, m- to me, it is more, uh, more important right now to use this example as a, you know, as a, a tool, as a figure to inspire yes. other, especially young women. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, the, since the first time that we talked about this podcast, something really big happened in Italy that we are all shocked about yeah. so you know the, it made the the, uh, the news in the u.s as well did uh, you know this yeah it, yeah it, mm. yes yeah you can yeah. talk about it if you'd like it's I, a terrible I would story just like to say that the murder of uh julia chiquetin si. really uh reminded us one more time that we need to take uh, take action yeah, and i'm do. personally tired of words i'm tired of beautiful lectures but now i really feel the responsibility of doing even the smallest thing that i can but i need to do something for you know young people the, they they deserve mm-hmm. uh, a better a better world yeah. than, than this mm-hmm. and uh, i was reading um a few days ago an article about um you know the violence in italy and uh believe it or not but 30 percent of women are victims of uh, psychological or physical abuse in Italy. Thirty percent. Thirty percent with with thirty Decla- percent that we know of. Yeah, but it means you know one out of three. That's almost. Wow. And it's it's scary, terrible. It's scary. right? Yeah. And uh, if you ask a man, if you ask men, uh, if they ever inflicted you know, any um, physical or psychological abuse, 99.9% would say no. So there is a huge problem. There is uh, really something that we need to do. And um, and I believe that, you know, culture, education... That's what I was going to say. Positive, how, do we, how do we do that? Because... Positive examples right. can, can really, mm-hmm. can really mm-hmm. aspire and... Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, um, I think, you know, we were talking about how current, you know, and the words that you just cited are in today's world. And I think sometimes it is a question of just stepping back and saying like, we're all humans here. Yes. Right. Yes. And like, none of this is, none of this is cool anymore. Exactly. Like none of this, this can't, we can't go forward. You know, we can't be, um, a productive, healthy society if these mechanisms, if you will, are still in place. So what do we need to do? We need to educate our children. Is that happening in the schools? No. They do, for example, you know, my daughter, I always talk about my daughter, and they do Educazione Civica, Mm -hmm. which starts at a fairly young age. It starts in middle school, and they do a lot of different things. But that, for example, is it too late? For example, middle school, is that too late? Sex education is too late in middle school. So when do we need to start, you know, um, I think a lot of it is opening up conversations about this, but also conversations that lead to specific actions, legislation, et cetera. It's not enough to just talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know, as you were saying before, words are nice, but, you know, we need to change a mentality. We need to change something that is sort of like internalized that is not, it just, it can't exist in 2023, unfortunately, it's one of the, um, it's, it's probably one of our, our greatest um, problems right now in the world is just the rampant um, hatred. 
mm-hmm. because that's fundamentally it's what it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just hatred in any form yes. is unacceptable. Yes, and if you notice, those conflicts, those wars are generated by man, yeah. by ego, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. by the financial interests, economic interests, political mm-hmm. interests. Of course. I mean, we could, but, but it's, we, yeah. we could talk about this forever and it just, it's, um, it just it gets more and more upsetting because yeah. you you see the world and I think you and I also have this sort of like access because we see young people mm-hmm. and so we see you know and we're if you're in an environment where you have young people and you're in an environment where you're intellectually curious or you're surround you see change yet we're stuck yeah it's a very strange time yeah. so um i think we need to return um, to those connections, we need to be talking. We need to be making sure that our young people are um, are okay. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's so important because a lot of this, I think, is also tied to mental health and the fact that oh, yeah. a lot of people are not doing okay right now. And unfortunately, a lot of things are the consequence of sort of not being okay. Exactly. And, and yeah. that's not going to go away until we take care of the members of our society make sure, I mean, that people are sort of getting the, those basic things that they need. Mm-hmm. Anyway. I agree. I don't want to get too heavy. So um, I don't even know where I want to go from here. But I did want to go back to um, to Florence. Okay. Because you talked about sort of, you talked about the grand tour. We were talking about the 19th century. Mm-hmm. You as a Florentine who mm. lived abroad for how many years, Lucia? Fifteen. Fifteen years. It's a long time. Yeah. What's Florence like now compared to what it was like when you were growing up or, or mm. when you were studying here or mm-hmm. when you left it? Yeah. What's good? What's bad? So, you know, um, going back to the importance of going abroad to go away, um, now I appreciate my city a lot more uh, than I used to do when I was uh, like let's say a teenager okay. or in my 20s okay. actually one of the reasons why I I wanted to leave was because Florence was too somehow claustrophobic for me yeah. too small the mentality was too you know narrow minded right. and uh, I was really critical of Florence and then when I was on the other side of the pond I started to you know appreciate the all the beautiful things that this city has to offer mm-hmm. and you know um going back to Sarah Parker Raymond this city has a long story of uh, nowadays we say inclusion at the time it was cosmopolitanism right um this this city is very very open and welcoming and um and and you know uh, it has its challenges, um, but um, I, I would like to quote a student of mine who last week told me that Florence is too big to be such a small city, and I and I liked it. What a lovely what a lovely way of putting it. Exactly, because there are so many things, you know, there are so many beautiful. Um, things to do, museums. There's a lot going on. Too. Lot going it on. didn't used to be like this. It Lucia. didn't used to be. It's really mm-hmm. yeah taken it, off. Is picking up the yeah. the, the speed, right. and uh, it's true. You can't get bored. Bored in, no, in Florence. There's a lot. To, it's a beautiful way of putting it. Your student yeah. put it really nicely. It's almost like Florence's personality. It's it's like too much, but it is a small town. It is a small town, but there are so many things. Mm-hmm. There are so many, you know, opportunities mm-hmm. also, even culturally, there are so many small museums. Mm-hmm. And going back to the hospital of Santa Maria Novella, that's a museum by itself. It's an incredible there museum. There are so many beautiful pieces of art. Mm-hmm. Um, so I sometimes surprise myself because even though I was born here and I, you know, lived many years, <laughs> I still find something new oh, every yeah. time. And and this is so beautiful, mm-hmm. you know. It's a surprising city. It's a surprising because city. It's almost like, you know how Florence is, was depicted um, by, for example, Mary McCarthy and the Stones of mm-hmm. Florence, right, as the sort of cement, um, well, not cement, but brick, you know, sort of um, austere in some way. You know, Florentines are not very open. They're mm-hmm. a little closed, et cetera. But... Um, but when you look beyond those sort of stone facades, you've got these luxurious, rich gardens. You know, you peel off that first layer mm-hmm. and 
Florentines that open themselves up to you. And yeah. then you discover that there's this city yeah. that's so full of incredible diversity mm -hmm. um, and that we should be celebrating that. And oh, yeah. so I think that Florence is at least the way I've been living here for 25 years and it's changed, I would say, just even in the last couple of years in a in a very impressive way for such a small city. Yeah, I agree. Um, it, especially culturally. You know, the attention has really been put on making Florence a cultural center, and I think it's working. Yes, I agree. And partially it's due also to this am amazing American community that we host in Florence. It's true. We have to acknowledge yeah, that the, the, the amount of knowledge right. that they bring Brava. and also this um, mentality. And innovation. innovation. Young people... I mean, there's not students, just young no, people. No, 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 yeah. but, but there are, no, because it's important to, not just young people, but everything also around it. People. So yeah. the fact that so many young people come to study here, because it's not just the U.S. students, it's all the students who are studying yeah. at the University of Florence now, mm -hmm. um, because they've been opening up, they do a lot of programs now also in English, their master's or things like that. There are a whole bunch of fashion design institutes. There's a lot in Florence that even just like a few years ago either, you know, wasn't here or just wasn't at where it is now. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think the fact that it draws this huge international community of scholars and students obviously then brings with it all of this other stuff. So the faculty, the interesting, you know, people who then accompany those journeys, if you will. Um, would you ever move back to the States? Yes. At some point, <laughs> you don't even hesitate. A part of me yeah. <laughs> wants to, yeah, uh, to go back to the states. Mm. Maybe, maybe who knows? Maybe yeah. later in, sure. in my life. I think it's, it, you know, I, I love your country, especially the the nature. Oh, the, it's beautiful. Also, it's where beautiful. you are, it's gorgeous up there. And yeah. I, I mean, if you can live in a place like that, I think it's. It's absolutely yeah. extremely livable. My dream would be to have a little house in Cape Cod. <laughs> oh, I spent every summer of my childhood on the Cape. And so I'm pretty much, that would be my dream too. And it's funny because I often, I, I tell my partner, I'm like, you, he hasn't been to Cape Cod. He hasn't actually even been to the States yet. Um, and I always say to him, you love Cape Cod. We should just move to Cape Cod, open up a little restaurant when we're older, you know, yeah. and I can be near the beach and we can have like a little vegetable garden and just have like a small place with a couple of rooms, you know, on the uh -huh. Cape. I adore, I adore that, that part of the world, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I think we have sort of a, it's a, when you're divided um, mm -hmm. between two cultures, it's a privilege, um, but it's also sort of a cross to bear. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I think in an ideal world, you know, I could see myself living half the year here, half the year there. Um, but yes, maybe in the future, that mm -hmm. would be sort of the dream. Mm -hmm. And what do you what do you miss about? Do you miss certain things about the United States? Are oh, there yeah. things that like some days you're just like, man, because yeah. some days I'm like, oh, it's because sometimes I miss the snow. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Seriously, really, it's so beautiful. The, the, you know, I do the, too. The fresh snow when everything is white. It's and so peaceful it's and everything's peaceful. muffled yeah. and beautiful and, and you're silent. Cozy at home. And, and you stop and you can reflect. The, the world mm. slows down. Yeah. Snow. Well, for those who don't know, New England snow is serious snow. And my first, um, when I went to Brown, when I went to graduate uh -huh. school in Providence, which is, you know, it's New England. Oh, yeah. um, we had a bad storm. My first semester, we had a terrible storm. And the snow was literally like up to my waist. I know what you mean. And I remember calling my friends and we were all like, okay, who's going to come over? Who's going to, where are we going to meet? And I remember going out and walking and, you know, I'd grown up in cold weather, but not like that. I remember <laughs> walking, you know, like out into the snow and the snow just like literally going up to my knees, sinking in the snow. Yeah. And it was paradise. Yeah. Nobody was around. Yeah. Everything was silent. So I miss that too. Yeah. I hear you on that. Yeah. And the and the sky. The sky is bigger. It's different. Is the those beautiful sunsets, mm -hmm. those colors. Mm -hmm. Um and of course I miss friends and um space. Yeah. And, and Americans are different. Like Americans we are different. are different. We're just like open and kind of easy and you know for the most part just kind of like pretty low-key yes you know yes and as a woman I felt a lot more respected I have to say in the U.S. interesting professionally yes and and personally, and personally. yes because sometimes here you know you walk and you get 
yeah. comments right. or things that are not absolutely invited, but right. sometimes they think... I wonder if that's also because of where you were. Like Western Massachusetts, it's often considered like. But I lived in Worcester as well, and I. Oh, okay. I, I so you were around. You just you and, never uh, felt. I always felt very very safe, very and comfortable, and okay. I traveled uh, across the U.S. You know, night and days, and I never felt myself in mm -hmm. danger. Okay. Yeah. So. so I have a couple of questions for you. As sort of we move into the end of our conversation, mm -hmm. I want to ask you two specific questions. One is about the students, because I think that there is a lot of value in the type of program that Holy Cross is is running, especially today, mm -hmm. because it is sort of, it's very different from, I mean, there are a few programs like it, but it's it's different from, let's say, the current popular model, if you will, which is like a money-making model now. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think is the most important thing that you can give to your students while they're here? What's your goal? In other words, what are you trying to, in the six months or in the year that they're here, what do you think is the most important thing that you can teach them and that they can take away? What a big question, Fosca. And I'm, that wasn't on my <laughs> list. <laughs> I, I'm reflecting now with you. I think I hope um, a boost of self-esteem is the answer because um, when they spend a semester year or a year and they face all the challenges, yeah. you know, by themselves, um, without parents, without their friends, yeah. they have to deal with the university, you know, bureaucracy with the... That teaches you a lot. That really teaches you a lot. If you, if you make it here, yeah. then... I agree. You know. I agree. And I, I always say it, you know, it's uh, going into the Italian university system from our point of view, especially coming from a private university, private Jesuit university like Holy Cross, where you're well taken care of. Yes. Um, you know, you go into the Italian university and it's sort of like, OK, Every, go. Yeah. You know, everything's lacking mm -hmm. and and you learn to survive. <laughs> that maybe you learn those skills yeah. that are so necessary in today's world. This is why I think we should all study abroad. Oh, in, yeah. in addition to the stuff that we said at the beginning, but, you know, there are certain skills that are kind of missing in today's workplace. Um, and I think those are the kinds of skills that you do acquire while you're abroad because you have to, you become communicative because you have to, to survive. You become more open. You become more understanding, right? And humble. Right. Humble. If you approach the culture with humility and also you you just become more aware of the fact that there is a big world out there but fundamentally we're all kind of the same yeah. and so if we can just kind of keep that message in mind maybe everything will will work out so i think that's actually a good a, a perfect answer and then what i wanted to ask you to end our conversation is what's what's next for you lucia what would you like to do so i would like to um, spend some time on uh, this research on Sarah Parker Raymond. Um, that's one thing. Another thing I would like to find a way to bring um, students to Florence from communities and from backgrounds that usually are not represented in, you know, study abroad programs. Um, also, I would like to find more connections to NGOs and volunteering yeah. projects. So if you know or someone who's listening... I have a couple of ideas. ...knows anything, just reach out to mm -hmm. me. And um, yeah, I would really love to, you know, to make this bridge between the U.S. and, and Florence more and more thick. Yeah. And I think also it gives the, the students a, a real sense of satisfaction I think in my experience working, you know, with Stanford students, I was for years, I, I sort of, I don't know, helped them find public service and internships. And, you know, that sense of satisfaction of helping, of giving something, of um, leaving a mark, if you will, oh, I yeah. think is part of what you were saying, just to go back to sort of what you know, hopefully a student will take away at the end of this experience. I think the notion of really having given something, um, leaving some kind of legacy, no matter how big or small it is, I think really fills you with this sense of satisfaction of, okay, I, I did something and there's sort of a concrete 
you know, result there. I touched somebody's life. I changed something. I did something. So I think with that in mind, I want to thank you again, Lucia. And I think we should go and make a pilgrimage to Rome. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, and we'll do a follow-up episode when your book comes out. Okay. Va great. bene? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Grazie. Grazie mille. Grazie a tutti. Alla prossima volta. Thank you once again for tuning in to this week's episode of 15 with Vasca and for continuing to do so. Grazie mille e alla prossima volta.